Okay, Lico 224, valid anagram. This should be grind 75 number seven, I think. And in this problem, you're given two strings and you wanna find out if they're anagrams of each other. And how you know that is you wanna see if you can make some word or phrase by taking any one of the words and just rearranging the letters, right? <clears throat> so if S is an anagram of T or if T is an anagram of S, that means that we took the letters of S, rearranged them exactly, right? Used every single letter exactly once and we made some word. It doesn't have to be a real word. It just has to be like a valid string that meets those requirements. And there's two ways to solve this. Um, the most straightforward way would be to just sort these two strings and compare them, right? Because if you sort them in alphabetical order, they're going to end up both being the same. Um, the runtime complexity of that, though, is going to be O of n log n, mostly because most languages use quicksort to sort. And quicksort on average is an n log n time complexity with a worst case of n squared. Um, but we can do better. We can actually use our favorite data structure, a hash map or an unordered map in C++, and make this a little more efficient. So I'll show you what I mean. So I have these two strings, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hash map for each string. So let's say S is going to have like this orange hash map, and we see that there's different letters. So we see that there's a letter A, and we're gonna map that to how many times that occurs. We see there's a letter N, we see there's a letter G, we see there's a letter R, and we see that there's a letter M. Similarly, this word also has A, has an N, has a G, has an R, has a, uh, oh, and an M, all right? And for each of these, we're basically gonna go through and we're gonna see how many times each letter occurs. So N only happens once. A only happens twice, I think I'm seeing it. G only happens once. R only happens once. M happens once as well. And then we do our other word. We see A happens twice. It doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, it happens twice because this is supposed to be true. This happens twice. N happens once, G happens once, R happens once, and then M happens, yeah, once as well. Okay, so we compare these two maps now that we've created, and we see that if all the characters occur at exactly the, exactly the same amount of times in both of these strings, and they're all the same characters, like, we have an anagram, that's it. That's the entirety of the problem. So really the hardest part is finding out how hash maps work in whatever language you wanna use. In this case, we're gonna be using C++. So we're gonna be using the unordered map, which has an O of one access time. So I'm gonna make a helper function though, because I don't wanna have like some redundant code. So I'm gonna have a helper function that returns an unordered map from a character to an integer. I'm just gonna call it get frequencies. And we're gonna take in a string s. And basically we'll make an unordered map from a character to an int. We'll call it result. Um, and now I know that I can just pass this by reference to avoid making unnecessary copies. I'll basically for car c and s, right? We'll say if s dot count, or sorry, not s dot count, if um, yeah, if res.count c. So what this is saying, for those of you who are not familiar with um, unordered maps in C++, this is just us asking, is there something in the map that has a key of the character, right? Because if there's nothing there, we want to just initiate that to one because that's like our first time seeing it. But if there's something already there, what we want to do is when we take res, we want to take uh, res of c, and we want to just increment that, right? Because 
we already saw, we already know that it's in it. So we just wanna access that key and we wanna increment the count that the key uh, maps to. Otherwise, all we wanna do is we wanna say, okay, we'll find res C, we haven't seen it yet. This is our first time seeing it. So we're gonna set it to one, right? Because we've only encountered it once. And at the end of this, we're just gonna return the results. So this is gonna be our little helper function. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, Let's make an unordered map from a character to an integer to represent the S count, which will be get frequencies, if I can spell, of S. Then we're gonna do an unordered map from a character to an integer. We'll do T count. We'll say get frequencies of T. Okay. And then at the end of it, what we're going to do is we're simply going to loop through. Let's say we pick a string at random. Let's say we pick S. We're just going to say that, okay, well, for a car C and S, right? If S count C doesn't equal t count c we're going to immediately return false otherwise we're going to return true right so what this does is we we picked s just randomly so like in our picture we look at a and we say okay well how many times does a occur in our map it occurs twice right but i also want to say okay well how many times does a occur in this map it also occurs twice we're good right but if for any reason these don't end up being equal, we would immediately break out of it because we know that we cannot make an anagram out of that. And just to be safe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if s.size doesn't equal t.size, we're just going to immediately return false, right? Because if s is smaller than t by, let's say, whatever number of characters, that means t is going to have characters that are going to be unused in the creation of S and vice versa. So we're just going to do this just to be safe. And let's run our code, see if it runs. Okay, that works. Let's do some of the example test cases. Awesome, that works. Let's submit. Cool, it runs. Um, it's supposed to be 9% faster. Wow. Um, it's pretty random. Uh, yeah. But basically, the runtime of this is going to, going to be O of N because we're going to make two maps. We're going to create the map, which is going to be O of N. So this ends up being O of N. This ends up being O of N. And then this for loop ends up being O of N as well. Because checking if something exists in a map is an O of 1 operation. So I'll just comment this right here. This is going to be O of 1. So these are all going to be O of 1 operations. It's going to be O of N, O of N, O of N. And what we're going to have at the end, we're going to have O of N plus O of N plus O of N times 1, right? Because we're nesting the for loop, which is going to equal to 3 times O of N which equals to just O of N, linear time. Space complexity is going to be, so here it's space, it's going to be O of N for that first hash map, plus O of N for that second hash map, which equals to O of the two times O of N, which equals to just O of N. I should note though that you could actually consider this in this use case to be O of one, right? The reason for that is, is we see that S and T will only ever consist of lowercase English characters, right? For which they're going to be uh, 26 times two, right? Because you're considering both, um, oh, sorry, sorry. It's just going to be 26 because only lowercase. We don't consider uppercase. So since we're only considering a lowercase, there's only 26 letters in the alphabet. So our map actually will only ever be of maximum size of 26. So that's actually O of 26 
but that's just O of one. That's that's constant. No matter how big our string is, right? Our string could be of size ten thousand. The things that we're going to be counting up, the counts that we'll be mapping to, will not be more than twenty six. And this is a good question because they have a really good follow up here. They say, well, what if the input contains Unicode characters? How would you adapt your solution? Or what if you can like put in any possible character? Well, in that case, then it would really be O of N because it would be highly dependent on what your string consists of, right? Because in this point, at that point, we don't know how restrictive our domain is for the characters in our strings. So then it actually becomes truly O of N. But I think it's like fine to just say O of N. Um, but you just should know that discrepancy. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the entire solution. It's again, a pretty short problem. It's a really good problem. Um, there are multiple ways to tackle it. And any problem that you can throw a hash map at is a problem that I like. So uh, yeah, that's all there is to it.